Hi friends. So I have some complicated feelings about the word activist. Those feelings could be summed up in this meme from Thought Catalog that says, of course I'm dedicated to activism. I've been actively chasing this clout. Like I'm sure we've all seen the people who have popped up online since activism became cool in 2015 that as soon as they get TV interviews or book deals or speaking tours, you stop seeing them, you know, doing the work in their communities. You see that they become the face of a movement, but they're not the heart of a movement or the hands of a movement or the feet of a movement. And that's my biggest fear. And I guess the reason that I've started shying away from calling myself an activist online, because I worry that I'm not doing enough to meaningfully make the world better. And so to do so would make me kind of a clout chaser. After all, the people I most respect in the world of social change are people you likely never have heard of because they're too busy talking with legislators or checking in on their neighbors or collecting supplies or watching each other's kids or meeting in living rooms and community centers to hop on the gram and style themselves as activists. In fact, they don't call themselves activists. They call themselves organizers. I call myself a digital organizer because most of my work has been doing things like writing the how to vote in every state or federal court system video series to give people simple ways to understand complex systems or using social media to help get the word out about candidates. I spend the vast majority of my time now helping organizations use text messaging to invite people to protest or help them look up their polling places or sign up to volunteer. I even try to tell stories on here about why all of that stuff is so important and I vote in every election, so I think I'm doing a good job. But this is where things get tricky. So this past week in New York City, there was an election for a couple of city offices like public advocate, circuit court judges, and some ballot questions about amending the city charter, basically our city constitution. And because I kept for voting so hard, I started researching the ballot measures well ahead of election day so that I could familiarize myself. Ballot measures are often worded kind of confusingly, so I wanted to do research, read endorsements and op-eds, weigh all the pros and cons, all of that. There was one ballot question about the city's Citizen Complaint Review Board, the one that exists to investigate complaints from the public against New York City Police Department, and the question was about whether to increase the number of members from 13 to 15, allowing city council to appoint members without the mayor's office's approval, setting a ratio so that the number of board members increases with the number of police officers hired, and requiring the police commissioner to submit a report to the review board whenever their recommendations are not followed. I didn't know how the question had arrived on the ballot, but I was happy to see it there and happier to vote yes on it. Especially because, and not that the NYPD doesn't have a long history of injustice, Justices under its belt, but the city just hired 500 new cops to hang out in the subway system and arrest people who jump turnstiles or otherwise evade the $2.75 fare. I see them nearly every time I get on a train, sometimes five or six or seven of them. They usually look bored, like they actually want something to do, which is probably why when a 19 year old kid named Adrian Napier jumped a turnstile earlier this month, a dozen or so officers went into action hero mode, banding together to do things like tackle a kid six officers deep and point loaded guns at a packed subway car full of unarmed, innocent people all over three dollars. So yeah, I have some complaints I would like to be reviewed. So it's Friday before election day and I close out a long week of work by taking the subway into Manhattan for, and I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, um, a massage appointment. And as I'm coming back home afterward, I get off the train at the exact same station where Adrian Napier was arrested the week before. I notice the new standard six or seven cops leaning on barricades as I walk off the platform. But then as I take the escalator up above ground, there are more. There's cops all around the entrance. And when I walk past them, there's more cops in every direction. On the public plaza, there look to be a hundred officers, maybe more. Every parking space on the street surrounding it is filled with a van or a squad car or some kind of vehicle with flashing lights. I keep walking, trying to speed up while still appearing non-threatening and calm until the sea of cops starts to bleed into a sea of protesters, carrying signs, wearing bandanas to cover their faces, or leading call and response chants to tell the NYPD that what they did to this kid 
but also what they're doing to black and brown and poor people all across the city while they just try to get to work or home from school is not okay. And here I was all excited to go vote on Tuesday for the Civilian Complaint Review Board and all of these people, they're not waiting till Tuesday. They're trying to hold the police accountable right this very now. So I wondered, is there a way of doing things better than mine? There's this book that changed the way that I think about social change work a lot. It's called Twitter and Tear Gas by Zainab Tufeci. And in it, Dr. Tufeci talks about how the social internet makes possible something called networked protest. That someone can post online about an issue and find a few people to share it and in barely any time amass a crowd of thousands who also care. But that crowd of people might not have a leader or a governing body or any kind of structure at all. Unlike, say, the civil rights movement of the 60s where something like the Montgomery bus boycott or the March on Washington was the result of months and weeks of community groups organizing to assemble the people power to get everyone to show, Network protest is more of a jumping off point rather than a culmination. Somebody might attend a protest that sparks a lifelong interest in organizing, or they might march one Saturday and never again. The social internet allows for movements that are really broad, even if they're not deep. And we have yet to understand how or if that changes their power. That night coming off the subway made me wonder if elections like network protest are also somehow limited in their power. Mostly because a lot of my organizing work relies on digital tools to help information spread far and fast. Check your registration status, find your polling place, go vote on Tuesday. But what does that mean for the Friday before? or the Friday after. Elections are maybe the single broadest chance we have to participate in deciding what values we hold and what we want our future to look like. But movements require both breadth and depth. They need organizers and communities six weeks before election day registering voters, but also six weeks after, you know? And also on off years and also all the time. They need people working from the inside and the outside. You need to get a citizen's complaint review board, and you also need citizens to raise complaints. And if they're not reviewed justly, you need them to complain louder and in the streets. They need activism, but they really need organizing. And so I think the danger in trying to call myself an activist is that I feel like hopping on social media real quick and posting an I voted selfie, hell, even making videos like this can sometimes scratch my itch to participate in a way that is broad, but not deep. So I make this video as a commitment that I'm gonna try to actively chase depth, to learn more about how I can invest my energy in my community for the long haul, to build power for election days and every day that comes after. If you have any ideas on how I should do that or how you wanna do that in your own community, leave them in the comments below. And if you like this video, there are a couple ways to support me. One is by clicking the notification bell so that you can be the first to find out when I post a new video. And the other is by supporting me on Patreon, where $1 a month gets you access to writing that I don't post anywhere else and also helps me make more of these videos. Thank you for watching and thank you for holding me accountable. I'll see you soon.